Hey everybody, welcome back. Let's talk about easy Hemi blocks. This will be a couple of video installments. This one deals with the left anterior Hemi block. So first thing I want to talk about Hemi block is a misleading term. Hemi sounds like incomplete, like it isn't as big of a deal, like the incomplete bundle branch blocks you see on a life pack readout or, you know, things of that nature. It's just not the case. Okay. Sometimes a Hemi block can carry a really high mortality rate especially in conjunction with other findings on the EKG, which we will get to in later installments as this becomes more advanced. It's just too much for one video. So let's learn how to identify the left anterior hemi block in a simple way and then talk about it a little bit more. So the first thing we're going to have to know is the anatomy of the hemi block. You can have a left anterior hemi block or a left posterior hemi block. And you can see the associated anatomy in the picture here. So all hemi blocks are going to be left. There are no right hemi blocks. The reason is the left bundle branch has two fascicles, has a front one and a back one, an anterior and a posterior. The right bundle branch has a single fascicle. It doesn't have as much muscle that it has to innervate as, as the left ventricle does. So there's really no need to have two fascicles in the right bundle branch. Um, for that reason, all left bundle branch blocks are going to be bifascicular blocks. And this is one of the reasons that that is the case. So the criteria for the left anterior hemi block. It's going to be a block of the front fascicle. Okay. So you're going to see EKG changes that associate with that area that change things. So what you're usually going to find, you're going to find a normal QRS complex. It's going to be right at 10 milliseconds. Remember when we deal with bundle branch blocks, we're usually used to dealing with wide complex rhythms greater than 0.12. It's not going to be the case here. You're going to find left axis deviation. So the axis is actually going to shift towards the left side in the case of the left anterior hemi block. Uh, it will usually be 40 degrees or more. And that's pertinent because that's where a lot of people kind of draw a fuzzy line between pathologic and physiologic left axis. So usually 40 degrees or more. You're gonna have an RS wave present in two, three and ADF. And because that's not a really commonly discussed waveform, I threw in a picture here. So as you can see, there is no presence of the Q wave you have an upsloping R wave, then you have a deep S wave follow behind it, and that terminates. So it's just R, there's no QRS complex, there's just an RS complex. You may also see small Q waves in one and AVL, as well as a terminal R wave in AVR. Now these are all criterion you should remember, but really lock in that two, three in AVF, that RS finding there. It's really a giant red flag. So you've had to take the time to learn how to identify this on an EKG, why is it important? When do they happen? They happen often enough in the setting of an inferior or an anterior acute MI. Now, both of those carry high morbidity rates. The inferior, obviously, because the entirety of the conduction system is perfused by the right coronary artery. So often enough, you're going to see it in the inferior MI because often enough, it is a right coronary artery problem. And you can also see them in the anterior. So what other causes um, can be behind this, this culprit here? Well, it can be genetic. You may be predisposed to a nerve degradation or nerve disease in the heart, the cardiac conduction pathway diseases. You may have aortic heart valve disease. So heart valve diseases can cause it particular emphasis on the aortic valve disease, okay? Cardiomyopathy. So there are lots of different reasons why we would have cardiomyopathy, but that can lead to the left anterior hemi block as well. And then hypertension. So poorly managed or unmanaged hypertension is one of the other causes of this. So. They can also be transient or constant. So you can have a left anterior block that comes and goes with cardiac demand or clamp down on blood vessels or things of that nature. No matter what the setting though, don't consider this a normal finding. A left anterior hemi block is not normal. It's a sign of something. Now, whether or not that's an acutely ill patient who is threatening to die in front of you, is dictated by presentation, hemodynamic stability, and of course, EKG changes, right? The hallmark of disease is always gonna be change over time. So you do have to watch it, but never consider it normal. Never consider it benign until it's absolutely proven to you that it is. That's one of the problems we find with, uh, with hemi blocks because people often enough, they kind of remember that information and they regurgitate it back to their instructor or on a test and then they forget about it because it's not one of the giant big sexy findings like a STEMI or bundle branch blocks or heart failure or things of that nature. All right, that's all it really is to the left anterior hemi block for our quick review here. 
Uh, look for new videos coming up soon where we'll discuss not only the posterior hemi block, but what happens when you find it in conjunction with the right bundle branch block and what that can mean to your patient. It'll be a big deal. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.